Hey guys, in this video we're going to do a small introduction into biomes. As you can see on the left, there are a lot of different types of biomes throughout the world. A biome is a grouping of ecosystems that have very similar climates and organisms. So if you'll notice, a lot of the biomes tend to stay in latitudinal zones. These latitudinal zones I'm talking about are like the boreal forests and tundra spanning across the northern part of our globe or like the temperate forest. And then if you look down here, you will see things like the tropical rainforest. What that means is that similar latitudes will have similar biomes, even if they're on different continents. However, latitude is not how we determine a biome. More often than not, we use temperature and precipitation data to determine a biome. If you look at this graph, it is a very complicated graph. It's actually two graphs put together. The first component is temperature. You can see average temperature over here. The labeling is in red, which tells you that the red line is the temperature line. This particular y-axis is the data for temperature. It's in Celsius. Our second graph is average precipitation, which you'll see on the right-hand side. This particular y-axis is the data for precipitation. That's 400 millimeters of precipitation. The blue region here represents precipitation. This graph, again, has two graphs smashed in it, and it tells us a lot of information. If you look at the, the time span, it's months, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. All the months are represented, and we're talking about New Orleans, Louisiana. Why do we say temperate? Well, temperate will tell us that there are different seasons. Here in January, February, March, and a little bit into April, we can see that it is winter. As we crest into May, June, July, and August, we can see that that's their high temperature. That's summer. And then as we start to get into September, October, November, we're in fall, late November, December, we get back into winter. That clear, definable seasons tells us that this particular biome is temperate. Then we talk about the amount of rain you will get here. Notice that the most rainy month is July with right around 300 millimeters of rain. The least rain that you're getting is in October, which is just at 100 millimeters of rain. These two things together will describe this biome. We will often use the temperature and precipitation to describe a biome. A very common biome people are familiar with is a tropical rainforest. Uh, it's tropical because of its average temperature, which stays right under 30 degrees Celsius all year long. Notice, no fluctuation in this. In the temperate biome, our temperature had a winter, a summer, a fall and went right back into winter. The tropical rainforest is tropical. It has the same temperature year round. The reason we call it a rainforest is because the large amount of rain it's getting. In December, it's getting 300 millimeters. January, 300 millimeters. February, 300 millimeters. March, right at 300 millimeters. April, just under 300 millimeters. Those are really, really, really large amounts of rain. In fact, it'll get more rain in one of these months than some areas get all year long. That's why it's called a tropical rainforest. The organisms that are in a biome will be very characteristic for that biome. Remember, we talked about niches, and that organisms will fill a niche or a role in the environment. If we look at this particular bird, he has a large beak, and that beak is for specialized to eat fruit in his environment. This leopard down here has spots to help blur its outline, so it's able to hunt in the treetops and in places where there are different varying levels of light. The chimpanzee is very specialized in, in his intelligence. Chimpanzees are very intelligent apes, and they are excellent at living in trees, gathering resources, and using tools. The snake has a green color because it will blend in with the foliage, and of course, it will have a very potent venom that allows it to cripple its prey. You'll notice that this frog down here has a very brightly colored back. I would put money on it that if you ate that frog, it would kill you. What you'll find in tropical rainforests is that the brighter that an organism is, it's either the baddest guy on the block or it's poisonous, which basically the color says, you better not eat me or you'll end up dead. The organisms that make up a biome often describe the biome. A tropical dry forest is much like a tropical rainforest with the exception of the rain. If we look at its temperature, still tropic, still warm year-round. There really is not a season here. 
but you do end up with a season with respect to precipitation. Janu in, in this particular one in India, January, February, March, April, May, June, and just a little bit in July, it's the dry season. There is not a lot of rain there. And then what they see is they see a shift in the wind patterns to where the wind starts blowing off of the ocean. When that happens, you get the wet season so that you get a large amount of rain in one season. Again, that becomes very important, and organisms in the tropical dry forest will wait for that rain. If we take a look at this picture, it's the tropical dry forest. There isn't any animals here, but what you'll notice is that there are these large grasses and there are trees. Both of those organisms, the are plants, are very good at conserving water. They can outlast that dry season until they get to the wet season. This one should look a little bit more familiar. It is our biome, although it says Philadelphia. That is in the same latitude as us, and they have a very similar biome. You'll notice they have a clear winter. January, February, March, April, May, it is very cold. As you're starting in April, May, you hit spring, it's warming up. June, July, August is summer. September, October, fall. November, December, you're getting back into winter again. Very clear seasons. That's why we call it temperate. If you look at our precipitation in our area, it is fairly consistent. You might say to yourself, well, we don't get any rain in the winter, Mr. Burns. Well, no, we don't get rain in the winter, but we often get snow in the winter, and you have to remember that that is precipitation. Temperate rainforest uh, will look fairly familiar. Here is a deer, very characteristic animal of the temperate rainforest. And you'll notice that in the background you have broadleaf deciduous trees. Those are trees that lose their leaves in the winter. And then we have these small uh, bushes, shrubs, small leafy plants very prevalent. Temperate rainforests tend to support a large amount of biodiversity. Not as large as a tropical rainforest, which has the largest amount of biodiversity. Again, when describing a biome, we're looking at a couple key things. First, temperature. Second, precipitation. And third, organisms. I would expect you to be able to identify some very key biomes based on these three characteristics.